Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. It's a bit of a late one tonight. It's actually just gone 10 o'clock at night. Most of the people in the chateau are probably in bed, um, but I'm out here in the cottage making jam and I've got uh, Andrew filming and I've got TT keeping me company as well. She'll probably hear the odd snort in the background. She's quite a noisy dog. So anyway, we're gonna be making Royal Bramble Jam. So this is a recipe that I've kind of made up. It's based around a drink that I love, mainly a liqueur, I'll tell you about that later on, and also uh, a cocktail that the liqueur is used in. The cocktail is called a Royal Bramble, so this is going to be a Royal Bramble Jam. To make Royal Bramble Jam, you're first going to need fruit. Uh, we've got one kilo of raspberries, and we've got one kilo of blackberries. If you saw the last video that I put out, me and my mum went and picked those. So they're hiding under there somewhere. Obviously it's jam, you're gonna need sugar. So with jam, basically whatever your fruit weighs, which is two kilos, you need the same amount of sugar. So we've got two kilos of sugar there. Basically those ingredients together would make a normal jam, but this is a special jam. So we are going to be recreating the flavor of Chambord liqueur. Now, Chambord liqueur was invented in the 1980s, um, but it's actually based on a 400 year old recipe for a liqueur from the Loire Valley. So the original recipe would have contained raspberries and blackberries. It would have contained cognac, honey, citrus peel, and bourbon vanilla, which is Madagascan vanilla. Basically what happened was when Louis XIV went to visit Chateau Chambord, he was presented with this liqueur that was made in the region and he apparently absolutely loved it. We're gonna be recreating that flavor today, but we're gonna give it a little twist. So we're gonna turn it into a Royal Bramble, which is a cocktail. So we're gonna add gin and champagne. So it is really basically a Royal liqueur turned into a jam. So this is my copper preserving pan. Uh, it's actually better on gas, uh, like a gas flame, because it doesn't have a completely flat base. But the Arga hot plate is very, very hot. We're talking somewhere about 300, maybe even more, 300 degrees Celsius that. So, although it's not gonna make perfect contact, hopefully it should get hot enough. I think it'll be all right. I mean, you can boil water in that slowly, but it does boil. So what we're gonna need is, first of all, we've got our raspberries and our blackberries, uh, and we're literally just gonna put those straight into the pan. Now, there's a bit of a waiting game. What we need to do is we need to get this fruit to boil down and start to break apart. But actually, what I want to show you is this. This is, I found this in the Chateau Attic and I asked Billy where it had come from and he said he had no idea. Uh, and then my mum said that it was hers, but that she'd actually got it from my grandmother. Um, and I, obviously just like missed this before because I thought it was like a, an old lamp that had been converted. But when I was having a rummage today, I realized there was no power cable coming out of it. So it must still be a working oil lamp. And it is. So it's actually got two wicks, this one. So it's actually very, very bright. Um, so no need to go out and buy a big, because I was looking for a big oil. I mean, I've got a few little ones, but this, um, this is absolutely fantastic. So, uh, let's light it. See, that's how hot the Argo hot plate is. If you put a match on there, it will just catch a light. So, let's put our wicks back up. There we go. So we put that back there. Turn, turn up the flame and put the shade on. How amazing is that? And it actually gets very, very bright. If I turn the lights down just here, you can just see how bright that is. And it uh, means I don't have to go out and buy one now. But let's have a look at this. Is this boiling? Yeah, it's boiling. So if you come and have a look here, you can see that the fruit has started to boil down and break up, which is really what you want. Now you can make jam in any kind of pan. You can make it in a saucepan, maybe something like this with a nice flat base. It needs a nice thick base. You need a heavy gauge pan so that your jam doesn't burn. You want to be able to distribute the heat evenly, which is why copper pans are the best for making um, jam 
because they uh, conduct the heat really well. So basically the heat spreads from the heat source up the sides of the pans and it cooks from all the way around. And another reason why these preserving pans are the best for making jam is because they're actually wide and they have quite shallow sides com compared to their width. So the wide pan with low sides is gonna help the water evaporate out of the fruit much, much quicker. So if you haven't got one of these, you can use a normal pan, as long as it's a big pan. But if you've got a copper pan, then by all means, you should definitely use it because they are fantastic. Uh, oh, this is an antique one, but you can pick up brand new ones that look almost the same. Oh, gonna have some problems here. This is enamel, so it's basically glass that's been sprayed onto iron as a, as a powder, and it's been put in a furnace so that the glass melts and forms a protective coating. But enamel hates acidic fruits. So all of these little splashes of fruit uh, on the enamel, if left to bake on, could actually leave um, little marks and it could actually take the shine off of the enamel. So I'm just making sure that there's none on there. So in the sugar goes. Now this is a special jam making sugar that contains pectin, which helps the jam gel. And if you just have normal sugar, you can buy pectin that you can add. And a nice little tip, if you have some red currants, red currants are very, very high in pectin. So you can always add a handful of red currants to any jam, which will help make it set. Now let's stir that in. Now, an interesting fact actually about sugar. You'll notice that I've put two kilos of sugar into that fruit, but the level of the fruit hasn't risen. Uh, and an interesting thing is, say you were to take a glass like this and fill it with water, warm water would help. Um, and you were also going to take another glass the same size filled with sugar. You could actually pour that sugar into that glass of water, all of it, and the uh, water would not spill out because sugar particles are actually small enough to fit between the molecules of water. So that actually you can take this glass of water, as I said, fill it with the same amount of sugar and it wouldn't overflow. It will just dissolve into it. Interesting fact. We just need to let that start to boil now. Um, and once it starts to boil, we can add some interesting ingredients. Right, so this is definitely starting to boil now, slowly. Some people say you can warm the sugar up first in a bowl so it cooks quicker. Um, but I never bother to be honest. My mum never bothers. So we just put the cold sugar in uh, and that should be fine. So what I've got here is a whole Madagascan vanilla pod um, or as it's known in France, it's Bourbon vanilla. Um, and Bourbon incidentally was the, uh, the family name of Louis XIV who made this drink famous uh, when he tried it at Chateau Chambord. I'm gonna add those to the jam vanilla seeds. Now we need the ones from the other half as well. Now I'm not sure whether I'm going to use one vanilla pod or two. I think it's quite strong. I mean, the smell is extremely potent. So I think we'll be all right with just one for this jam. Um, there we go, that's the other half. Take the, um, the skins from the pod and drop those in as well, but you will need to fish them out at the end, but they will help to, to flavor the jam. What we're going to add next, so you're going to need the zest of one small-ish lemon uh, and the zest of one lime. Now you literally just want the zest and that is the, the skin here, you don't want any of the white stuff. So we're going to just do that. I haven't gone crazy with it, there's still a bit on there. Um, we can always add more later. I'm going to put a bit of the lime in as well. Probably zested about 50% of that in there. Uh, if we want to add more later, we can do that. No problem at all. Oh, this is really starting to boil now. So we're going to stir in that zest. We've got the vanilla in there. We've now got the lemon and the lime zest in there. What we need to add now is the mixed spice. So this is mixed spice. You can get it pretty much anywhere. It contains um, coriander and cloves and cinnamon and ginger, um, mace, um, allspice. It's got a bit of everything in there basically. So I'm gonna add just one teaspoon. 
because back in the year 1600, this would have been some of like the most expensive ingredients that anyone could use. Um, so it's definitely great for any sort of raw recipes. So we're gonna add just a teaspoon, not too much, because it's quite strong, but it's quite a lot of jam here. So we don't, wanna, we don't wanna go crazy. So we're gonna stir that in. Next, I'm gonna add half a cup of cognac. Now I've got Hennessy here. Um, ideally, you would actually use like a, um, uh, like an XO, like an extra old, maybe aged about six years minimum for uh, a really fancy liqueur, but because it's jam, um, we're not going to, but we're gonna use something quite nice anyway. So Hennessy, oh, that's quite a lot. Well, well, <laughs> oh, we're having some sort of reaction. I think it might be the alcohol evaporating. Oh, the smell, oh, it's wonderful. Now that, that needs to, obviously I've put quite a lot in there, that needs to cook down now. Uh, next, we're going to add honey. Um, one of Louis XIV's absolute favorite um, trees and fruits was um, the orange tree. The smell of orange blossom was one of his most favorite things in the world. He's the person that made this liqueur famous. So we're gonna add some orange blossom honey with raw jelly. Uh, and I got this just at the supermarket, it actually wasn't expensive. I think probably about two tablespoons full, I think, because honey really can overpower. Um, we don't want too much in there. Now you can use any honey, like seriously. It doesn't have to be the finest with the raw jelly um, orange blossom honey, but if you can get it, it will make the difference in the flavor. Honestly, this is ridiculous. It's like the most luxurious jam that could ever be made, I think. And, it, and the only thing that it could have in it is um, some 24 karat gold, maybe. Oh, that's an idea. Got any gold leaf? No, I'm joking. Um, so, so far we've got uh, one vanilla pod. Uh, we've got the, the sort of, maybe sort of 50% of the zest of a lime, about 60, 70% of the zest of a lemon. Uh, we've got two healthy tablespoonfuls of um, honey. We've got one teaspoonful of mixed spice and we've got half of a cup of cognac. So I'm gonna give this a stir now and let those flavors infuse. So um, I don't know how much gin we're gonna add and I don't know how much champagne we're gonna add, but I think we're ready to add the gin. So we added half a cup of cognac. I, I'd say we'll add half a, a, a cup of gin because to be honest, uh, there's no alcohol. Once this is uh, evaporated off, there's gonna be no alcohol. You're just gonna be left with um, the flavors of the gin, which is juniper, um, uh, grains of paradise from West Africa, uh, cubba berries from Java, uh, cassia bark from Indochina, almonds from Spain, licorice from China, juniper berries from Italy, lemon peel from Spain, coriander seeds from Morocco, uh, angelica root from Saxony, an orris root from Italy. So all of those flavors are gonna go into this jam. So let's say half a cup. Why the hell not? Oh, it does a weird thing. That alcohol evaporates off almost immediately. Look at that. I need to give it a quick taste to see where we're at flavor wise. Oh, that really does give it something. If you can get Bombay Sapphire, get it. If you can't, any gym will do. Um, but we're using that one. Uh, oh, that is really nice. I think the amount of vanilla is perfect. The amount of citrus is just enough to cut through. Uh, the sweetness, um, mixed spice, you can, you can, you've got a hint of it, but not too much. So one teaspoon is more than enough. Um, and honey. The honey flavor does come through. You don't want to add too much. I think two healthy tablespoons full of honey are perfect. Cognac, I can taste the cognac, but it's not overpowering. So half a cup, I think was more than enough. Half a cup of gin, half a cup of Hennessy. Uh, I think it's time we added some champagne. Uh, and obviously because we're not going to be, we're not going to be adding all of this bottle of champagne, but we have to open it. Yeah, TT agrees. You must have heard that in the background. Um, should we have a, do you want some champagne? Yes. 
Yeah? yeah? Okay, why not? Let's open this then. I probably would say it's not the best champagne in the world, um, but I'm not really a champagne snob, so. Um, oh! <laughs> uh, but it's it's more than good enough for jam. I mean, it's, it's more than good enough for jam. Uh, this is should not be going in jam, really, but we're making a very luxurious one. So uh, the first glass should go into the jam. Um, so this is one cup, which is 250 milliliters. Uh, and in France, champagne should be poured no less than three times to fill the glass. So that's one, two, let it fizz, uh, and then a third time. So this is the very luxurious part. Are we ready? Oh, look at that. I think it's time I gave this thing a little taste. Wow, actually, do you know what? The champagne really tones everything. It just brings everything together. It's, it's, it, it's, it's perfect. I think we could probably add a little more, to be honest. I think we could probably add one and a half cups of champagne. Two cups of champagne? I don't know. No, I'd say one and a half. I think it needs just a little, a little bit more. It's funny because you can taste all of the ingredients. You can taste the champagne, you can taste the gin, you can taste the cognac, the vanilla, the honey, and the citrus and the mix, but you can taste everything, but not, not, not one ingredient overpowers the other. They just work. Uh, I should actually know this because I made jam with my friend Stephanie's mum, Isabel, and we had the same problem. We kept getting foam. Uh, and what did she do? She added a teaspoon full of butter. Well, we're gonna do the same. Butter, look at the foam. Shall we see if it makes it disappear? Stir that in, and it's gone. It's going, well, it's almost gone. How much champagne did I put in that? I put in one and a half cups. I think two cups of champagne. So we're gonna put another half cup of champagne in the mixture. Oh, look at that. Which will make it two cups. In the meantime, we've got I'd say half a bottle of champagne left. Do you want a glass? Why not? Right, there you go. Cheers. <laughs> it's not bad champagne, actually. So in the simmering oven, these have been hitting here for a few hours now. I've got a tray and all my jars. What I did is I washed all the jars. Uh, I put them in this oven tray um, and into each jar I put the rubber seal. Now you, can, you can use any jar, it doesn't have to have the rubber seal, as long as it has uh, um, one of those pop, poppy things on the top of the lid that, that let you know that it's sealed, it's fine. So I poured some boiling water into each one um, and into the tray and I put them in the bottom oven, which is about 100 degrees Celsius, which is boiling point. And that would be enough to sterilize them. So all I need to do now is to pick up the hot jars and pour out the water. So you're gonna to wanna to handle the jars with super clean hands. So what I've got here is an old bar of carbolic soap, which is incredibly antibacterial. So I'm gonna give my hands a good wash. I've got a nail brush here, I'm just gonna give them a good clean and then we can start um, handling the jam jars. Because obviously they've been sterilized. I don't want to then touch them with dirty hands and make them unsterile again. So uh, I'll give these a clean and then we'll start jarring them up. Make sure that there's no water in the jar because it's warm, uh, any water that's left in there will evaporate. And if you can get these little Le Parfait jars or um, you can get the Kilner jars, I think they're Kilner, you can get them in the UK. I don't know what brand they sell in America uh, or wherever you are in the world, but 
they're always the same. So that's sterilized. Let's fill our first jar. I don't want to get any jam on the outside. Oh, that is warm. Okay, here we go. That looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to let that just set on the side. Now with jam, basically any steam that's coming off of that jam now is going to displace the air that's sitting on top of the jam. I'm going to let it cool a little bit, but you want to close the lid up whilst there's still steam coming off of that because obviously um, the steam's going to push the air out, which will, um, when you close it, there'll be just steam inside. So the steam will condense and create a vacuum, uh, which is what seals it tight. Uh, and obviously there's no air in there. It can't uh, go off. And also, obviously the sugar helps it from going off as well. So I'm going to just do one now, actually. That should, that should be fine. So we've got 14 jars of uh, raw bramble jam. Um, so they're all uh, sealed up now. Once, the, um, once all of that steam condenses inside, then they'll form a vacuum inside and then they'll seal themselves. Uh, and then they'll probably last a good year, maybe even more in the cupboard. It's funny that the actual recipe uh, for this is inspired by a drink that was loved by Louis XIV. We ended up with 14 jars exactly. So um, I'm just going to give this a clear up now. And I think tomorrow morning I'll sit and make some labels for these. And I actually made a cake. I made a Victoria sponge. But I haven't actually, I, I've got it here. I made the two sponges. Uh, there's no filling in them at the minute. So I think maybe tomorrow I'll use one of the jars, um, or some of one of the jars, and I'll make a very extra special Victoria sponge sandwich. And I'll see, see if anyone wants a slice. But um, yeah, for tonight, I'm gonna to clear this up, and I'll see you tomorrow.